PANOSC is, uh, stands for Photon and Neutron uh, Open Science Cloud. It is a uh, project which is financed uh, by the H2020 Infra EOSC 4 call. We do uh, experiments in uh, hard uh, condensed matter, in chemistry, in biology, in uh, environmental sciences, in uh, cultural heritage. Uh, all of these are very uh, varied and, and diverse and uh, the EOSC will help people to uh, link the data from these different uh, research fields and uh, to gain new insights with that. Because the success of the EOSC rests on data being fair, EOSC inherently uh, safeguards cultural heritage data for the future, whether it be scientific or art historical, or conservation or other data. And for the optimum care of cultural heritage, we must be able to find, access, interoperate, and reuse our data when we assess the health of cultural heritage objects and sites in the future. Um, but unlike a patient, or the, unlike the lifetime of a, of a patient, uh, the lifetime of cultural heritage is earmarked to be eternal. And because the health of cultural heritage depends on our continued understanding of its condition, it's uh, therefore essential that we care for the recorded data from which we glean this understanding. Uh, that means that the recorded data from cultural heritage uh, must therefore survive through continually changing technologies. And I think that the EOSC is the only way that this will be feasible. We produce together petabytes of data. And this data has until now not been open data. So we have started in the past, in the last 10 years, uh, defining and implementing open data policies. And these policies are now coming to fruition. And the EOS for us comes at just the right time, where we can make this data available to a much larger community. Panoski is developing uh, software together with the uh, Jupyter uh, notebook community. Uh, we are improving and enhancing the uh, scientific data visualization in Jupyter. This will be made available to the EOSC and to uh, the world at large. Uh, it's all open source. We're also developing uh, data catalogs, open APIs to search across these catalogs, and an electronic logbook. And all of these are tools which we will uh, feed back into the community. The photon and neutron community as an authentication infrastructure and authorization infrastructure in place since 2012. Uh, this is called Umbrella ID. From the beginning, Umbrella ID has been designed to try to simplify the, uh, the life of our users. This is really our target, having something simple for the users where they can authenticate themselves, get access to the resources they need, the more seamlessly uh, as possible. By moving from the Umbrella ID service to the Umbrella AI, we achieve two main points. One, first of all, make a service more user-friendly, deliver more services to the Panos user community, and at the same time enable the research infrastructures that are part of Panos to be able to provide these services as EOSC services to other research infrastructures outside of the Panos community, thus contributing directly to the EOSC vision of creating a shared uh, pool of services available to the European scientists. Our work package on data analysis services, we are mostly working on the R in FAIR, which is the reusable. So we, we will lower the barrier for people to reuse data that has been used in a scientific study before. And maybe it's worthwhile giving an example. Typically, when a researcher wants to embark on a new topic, they first need to read the literature, they need to understand what has been done before, and they would typically want to maybe repeat an experiment or a computer simulation that has been published already to learn the techniques and to know they trust these results, and then they want to build something new on top. And with open data, of course, this is possible because you have access to the data, this is great, but a significant part of the effort goes into processing that data. And this is where the software comes in. If I have the software available, it takes me relatively little effort to re-execute that software, get to the same results, and then I can start my new study. If I haven't got that, I may well have to plan six months, maybe several years to recreate that software to get to the same state that other people have been at before. 
And that's why it's so efficient to make the software available together with the data. I am actively involved in development in EOSC, uh, where I am developing additional features for the software for X-ray optic simulations called OASIS. It is used to simulate different beam properties. The effort specifically is directed into integration of the OASIS into the rest of the PANOSC workflow. So to provide a sort of uh, simulations at the core of this uh, workflow. Uh, firstly, by providing the users easy access to these uh, X-ray optic simulations and then eventually uh, the users will be able to use the results of these simulations also uh, in other software which is used for data analysis. I think having open and accessible data has been a huge boost, particularly in structural biology. Um, crystallography has historically um, had a very open uh, policy with the Protein Data Bank being one of the earliest um, examples of an open database where people have to deposit coordinates and reduce data. And I think we can only benefit by having the raw data available for these structures as well so that we can validate the results that we have but also so method developers can have access to the final data sets to help improve data processing and data collection. Mm -hmm.